and welcome back to Dirt and Dints. Now in this brilliant new episode, we have got EcoX Gears four wheel drive UHF, which we are going to unbox and review. So grab yourself a drink, sit down and enjoy the episode. So as we said before, we have got Eco X Gears UHF four-wheel drive pack, which we're going to unbox. So let's open it up and have a look what we've got inside first. So welcome to the Dirt and Dints bench, where we are going to unbox this new UHF. So this is a vehicle-mounted UHF. It is very much a remote controlled one. Obviously everything is on the handset. So let's have a look what we've got in the box. So we've got our instruction manual, which we probably do need later on in the track. We've got our hand unit, which obviously, as you can see, has got all the main functions and the buttons, which we'll zoom in and have a look anyway in a second. We've got the main unit or the brains of the unit really um, in the box here. Let's have a look. We have some pass-through cables, which obviously allow us to plug in the head unit to the main box, power box, whatever you want to call it. We've got the power cable, and we've also got a pass-through port. Uh, what else we got in here? We've got a 3M double-sided patch for the back of the magnetic receiver. So the benefit of this EcoX gear hand unit is that on the back end, it is magnetic rather than a slide-on socket. So as you can see there, it would generally slide on, but this one, magnetic's on and it's done. We've got our antenna on the side here, which this is their full driving antenna. So it's designed for short wave or uphill, downhill, and it is 2.3 decibel. So if you're wanting to have a higher decibel, that's generally for flat ground where you're doing large convoys or long range where this is all about eyesight or line of sight and it's point to point. So shorter but stronger in those mountains and terrains areas. We also have the cable for that. We've got the Z bracket for if you want to mount it onto the side of your bonnet. So your bonnet will come in there. Sorry, your bonnet will sit there and open up that way. We've also got the cap, so when you want to take the antenna off. So the bonus is that EcoX gear antennas are interchangeable. So if you want to take this antenna and use the long range antenna, all you need to do is take it out and if I can get it, untwist like that. And now we can interchange. So that's everything that comes in the box. Alrighty, so on our main unit here, which I'll try and get on the screen there, we have our main buttons, which I'll come around. We have our volume up and down, channel up and down, call lock, so you can lock it to a channel. You've got the scan function. You've also got the squelch, the menu, and I'll have to have a look at what the CTCS, DCS does. But you can see very much on the front page here, this is just a sticker, but it sort of gives you a bit of the function, functionality or the layout, which we'll go more into after we install this unit. So now we've unboxed it, we'll pretty much go down to the car and we'll start fitting it out. Alrighty, so we're out here ready to go and we've just come across the hardest part of mounting the UHF aerial and that's actually choosing where to mount the aerial. Now for myself, I'm pretty lucky that I already know where I'm putting it because the hole's there. I've pre-drilled the hole, pre-drilled pre the hole. That's a 14mm bit, so I use a set down drill bit. You might have a 14mm of your own, but you could probably go a 16mm bit, but I found the 14mm to be nice and tight. That it's not going to move too much, it's not going to rattle loose anyway so the reason i've gone for that spot next to the headlight and you probably think it's a really weird spot but it basically mirrors this one that is a nitto fitting or a quick attachment for a sand flag now we need a sand flag for the border track trip which is coming up as it's a requirement for south australia i think maybe some parts of vic that well it's also just safety but when you're driving in the sand dunes, obviously you can't see a car as it's about to come over the top. If you're coming from the bottom side, that's on the two way stretches, obviously. So a sand flag allows you a bit more height so a car can see if there's another car about to come down. So 
the reason we've done there is, so that side, is when you stand exactly like here, it's in line perfectly with the sand flag. So when the sand flag's hoisted like a pirate, or a sand pirate, the hole for the antenna will sit perfectly. You have to stand, if you stand here, it's not gonna be in line, but if you stand there, it's still not gonna be in line. So you need to stand there, it'll be perfectly in line. Anyway, I'm gonna go fit this in and I'll show you what it looks like once it's all fitted. All right, so it's been a couple of days since the last film or anything, but what I have done is I've fitted the aerial that's all wired in through the engine bay. I'll show you where it's popped out. I've just popped it through the firewall and that's now currently sitting on the floor here ready to go so the next step is i'm going to look at taking out the amplifier for the old uhf under the seat here which we don't need because we're not using that uhf anymore so that can probably come out the, the hardest part next is trying to work out where to put that control unit i've got plenty of cable so putting it anywhere is not generally going to be too much of an issue i'm going to maybe even fit it underneath the center console and then pass the cable through with all the ports and stuff but it's just going to be a trial and error. It's also where I can get the power from too. That's the other one. But I'm pretty sure I should be able to piggyback the power off that amp unit because that would have obviously plugged in somewhere. So I might be able to use existing plugs. I'll probably have to strip that wire and sort of solder on the new ones because the new ones come with, uh, I don't know if there's other, might be that one, uh, come with inline fuses, good glass fuse. I'd prefer to use that rather than just hardwired in. Just in case something goes wrong down the road. I mean, with my wiring, that's generally a possibility. So, that's the next step, is trying to work out where to put the control unit. Um, so yeah, so they've got the end strip there ready to go, and that's obviously that plugs into the back of the control unit but they've got that inline fuse, which is going to be the important thing to get in there, just in case something does blow, we don't blow the car. I mean, it's pre-ECU, so it doesn't have an ECU to worry about blowing, but it's got other electronics, so, and fire, fire no good. Unless you're trying to cook something, or heat yourself up, fire no good. Anyway, that's the plan. I'm going to go find a spot to mount this control unit, and I'll show you where I put it. Alrighty, so I've just realised before I mount the unit is that I needed to mount the handpiece. So, spin the camera. I've just gone and put the handpiece just there, which in relation to the steering wheel is pretty much next to it. Now, the reason I've done it there is because obviously it's easy for me to read, just out of the way there, blah, 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 blah. So, the reason I'm talking about this now is because it's probably a good idea to decide where your handpiece is going to go. I think you do get a lot of pass through cable or data cable extension cable for it but it's good to mount it where you want it to end up and then you can adjust your control unit mounting to accordance so what i'm thinking of doing is i've got this pass through port there which i'm thinking i might mount just under there somewhere so it's easy to disconnect probably just hard to see there but it's just down the side there so probably a bit of double side tape just to the side of that. And then I'll run the cable up and under and it will pretty much go through there under the center console and then I'm gonna generally just probably put it under the passenger seat like the existing UHF amplifier was. It's out of the way, it's not gonna be interfering with anything. I think it's gonna be the best bet. And the, I know for a fact that the antenna cable will reach, the power cable will reach, everything will reach. So it's gonna be my best spot. So now I've done that hand unit, I'm gonna go and double-sided tape with some 3M tape, that pass-through port to the side of the box there, because I don't really adjust my seats, I don't need to stress too much, and even if I do adjust my seat, it'll be low enough that it'll slide over the top. So I'll do that, and then we'll 3M tape, or double-sided tape, the control unit under the seat. I think there's some Velcro left over from the old M, I'm not too sure, but I'd just rather use my new stuff make sure it doesn't move anywhere and then that should be it so we're not getting too far away from finishing the installs we've just basically got to do the control module under the seat power which will cut and join and put install this pass through cable so very very close uh i'll go and do all that and i'll show you what it looks like when it's all done all righty so it's the afternoon time and we've got the radio all installed so we'll go and show you what it looks like so the unit's all in Probably a bit hard to see, but it's here it is sitting there. 
So the tape actually fell off, so I went and screwed it in, but the magnetic thing works bloody well. That runs all the way down to here, where the pass-through cable sits just there, which then runs on the mess on the floor, comes under the seat, and the box just sort of sits just there, pretty much. So all that wiring's done. The power, I just grabbed off the existing power and just used some, uh, it's like a solderable heat shrink. When you join it, you can heat it up and then it joins it all. It's good stuff. I'm not very good at soldering, so it works brilliantly for me. So that's all in. And then obviously, just to power it on. Got the power button. And it's all on. So in the meantime, now I'm gonna go run out and test it all and give it a thorough running. And we will come back and give you a good thorough feedback on what we think of the UHF. All righty, so now that we've got the unit all installed, let's go and flick it on and show you what it looks like. So this is the main screen, try and show it there. This is the main screen that we get. On the side, you can see the reception level plus the squelch on the left there. Top one there is the reception level, and this is our channel. Using the up down, we can change through the channels, obviously, all the way up and down to 80. On this side, we have the volume, so it's at volume nine, and that's the max. Now, the main thing I've got with the volume is it can be quite hard to hear at the full max volume, but on the back of the unit, the actual uh, head unit for the UHF, not the handheld, but the head unit, there is an aux port for the ability to plug in, I'm trying to get some line here, the built-in ability to be able to, uh, what's the word, there you go, get some light, plug in a, a speaker so you can get better volume in the actual head unit. Now, that is a plus in my book. So definitely, if you've got the option to get one, definitely go get an external speaker because it can be quite hard to hear the head unit uh, or the hand unit if you've got music on, that sort of stuff. So, we're getting a bit of reception on this one. Now, try and cycle through to 40 because that's a well-known trucker channel. So you might hear some chatter. Now, the reception level will move up and down to the value of the reception of the channel and the squelch will move up and down. Now, this is key because if the reception arrow is below the squelch, you don't have good reception for that channel and it's gonna be real scratchy the whole time you're trying to talk on that channel. If that top arrow is above the squelch, you'll then have good reception and be able to punch through that squelch level for that channel. So each uh, channel has a squelch which is sort of like the interference of that channel. So if you can punch through that interference, well then you're definitely gonna have good quality comms when you're using that channel. <clears throat> to hit the squelch, you can press that squelch button and then you'll get all that interference. I won't press it because you sh you'll just hear squ uh, a lot of interference. The menu is really easy to navigate. So obviously you've got duplex channel and non-duplex channels, you can turn the duplex off or on. You've got the scan mode, which you can engage, the GS priority watch call tone, so that's when you use the call button, um, busy channel lockout, so if a channel's too busy, you can jump off it. Uh, what else you got? Backlight color, so you can change the colors for the actual head unit, so you got blue, green, like a lilac, purple, white, green and red. Now I've gone red because all my other lights in the car are red so why not keep it the same. Um, problem is if you spend too long on the one menu option you can change the brightness so you can have it really bright or really dull. I've got it at the top. Um, key beep on or off. Not too short NRC. Dual speaker select. So the dual speaker is you can have, sorry, drop the camera. You can have the sound come from the head unit itself or the handheld unit. Um, or you can have it from both. I've got it from both just to try and hear. Uh, I find it's okay, but obviously if you've got music up, you know, it's gonna be a struggle to hear it. So I'd, I'd still definitely invest in a external speaker. Uh, the buttons are on the side, quite big, easy to use when you press it. Um, I've changed to like 35 or something. No, that's an emergency channel. We won't go on an emergency channel. 
about like 30 priority. So obviously when I talk, you can see that the all the arrows on the TX light up. So that means that the actual head unit is now transmitting. So you know that it's gonna get that reception out. Um, <clears throat> the priority on the top there, as you can see, if I think, there you go, priority there. That is in relation to the priority button. So if you're on scan, you can then set a priority channel that you wanna jump back to, or if you're on scan and you jump to another channel, so if we go like scan, and then I hit scan on, no, oh, it's gonna make me a liar. It's gonna automatically jump back to 30. So if I take priority off, or if I move up to say 38, and then hit priority, it jumps back to 30. So that's really good that if you're on that scan function, listening to other people chatter, and you wanna jump back to your channel that you're using with your mates, whatever, you can hit priority and then jump straight across. The last button to sort of really take notice of is the emergency button. That emergency button will either take you to channel 5 or channel 35 and then cancel. So channel 5 and 35 is emergency channel only, so try not to use that as your like general conversating channel when you are out on the road. So that's the actual head unit function. So we'll jump out, jump back in the shed and we'll have a chat about the options that these UHFs come with, which some of them are bloody brilliant. Alrighty, so I'm back in the shed now. I've gone and pulled out the manual, the instruction manual, so the lights are flickering because they're LED on the camera. But, 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 the brilliant thing that EcoX Gear has gone and done, which is sit down your seat, is that when you go and purchase this unit, that the instru instruction manuals are so well done that it actually, just try and set the camera back up, they encompass everything on that instruction manual. So they go through everything that the unit can do. On that manual, it talks about all the stuff we just spoke about, each different button, the functions of the actual machine. It's got everything. Also, on the manual, it goes through a list of channels. So you can see there, channel five is an emergency, and channel 35 is an emergency. Then it tells you that, obviously, commonly used channels, channel 10 for four-wheel drive, caravans use 18, 29 for road safety, channel 40 for truckies Australia-wide. Why is that important? Because it goes and gives you from the box that really easy to understand and really makes it like easy to use that you can pull it out of the box, install it and start using it straight away. You don't have to be a wizard with this sort of stuff. So they've really taken into consideration the average person using their equipment basically. The other good thing on these machines is in the instruction manual, it also talks about duplex mode. Duplex mode is the ability to use a channel off repeater so you can get better reception. Some channels are set to duplex, some aren't. So not all are compatible. You'll have to check through on that list of channels to make sure that you're using a duplex channel. Why is that important? Because if you're in the middle of the outback and you've got the instruction manual, which I keep mine with me, you can find out what the duplex channel is and then go out and make an emergency call if required. That's really, really good because it, obviously, like I said before, it takes into account everyone using these equipment. It keeps on, almost keeps on machines, but their equipment. Other brilliant thing that these have in them is a noise reduction circuit in the actual unit. So what that does is it filters out a lot of background noise. So on the recent trip that I've just done with my old man, we were talking on the UHF a fair bit. So I actually had a really good crack are using this equipment. Now for a lot of the time, he couldn't actually hear the music playing in my background in the car while I was talking because of this noise reduction, which is really, really good because if you're hitting corrugations and you're shaking, you're generally not gonna hear it. Talking about corrugations, we did hit some rough bumps and it did cut out, but that was mainly because my fingers were doing these ones as I'm trying to drive and focus. So that's not an equipment issue, that's a user issue. Now, the other thing we wanna talk about is the warranty. The warranty on these things, they come for a year warranty, but if you go and register as per the manual, you get an additional four years on the warranty, which is bloody brilliant. So you know you're gonna get looked after really, really well if something goes wrong with your equipment or your EcoX gear UHFs. Now, another thing I wanna talk about is reception. Now, when I talked about that whole reception thing with the squelch and that sort of stuff, when we were leaving Melbourne on our first day of the trip, we encountered a lot of bad weather which really stuffed up the reception of the UHF. Now, why this is important is because at the time being, I was only run, running the 2.6 decibel antenna. Now, you're probably wondering, why does this have anything to do with the review? But that decibel, or the, that antenna decibel, 
really correlates with how well you're going to receive and transmit radio signals while using the UHF. A 2.6 decibel, or the short whip, four-wheel drive whip, is designed to go from peak to peak. So if you're sitting on a hill, you'll get it at the top here and you'll get it at the bottom. So they're definitely designed for this sort of way. As soon as you get to flat open, it sort of gets lost in the mist, if that makes sense. So it's really designed for quick point to point. Now, if I had gone, and I would have definitely considered going to get this six decibel where I'm going on a bigger trip now, because I just want to make sure that I'm getting that message out there. It's like, I had to be within a couple of hundred meters of my old man to be able to talk to him. Once I got sort of out of that six, anywhere above, we'll say 600 meters, is that the reception started to get really, really crackly. Now, that is not the equipment's fault. That is the, the fact I was using a lower decibel whip with a long range transmission. So that's definitely, if something to consider, is consider getting yourself that interchangeable bigger whip so you can transmit further on. Now, the other thing I want to chat about is, like I said earlier, is that speaker. I would definitely go and invest in that external speaker and plug it in. It just makes it so much easier. You can hear so much easier when you're talking, also when receiving a voice, tone message, we wouldn't call it, a transmission from someone else. You don't have to sit there and go, hold on, sorry, what was that, and turn down the music in my heart to do quite a fair bit. But saying that too, is that there, if you don't have any music on, the sound that you get out of these units is actually really quite good. It's um, definitely not something I'll complain about, but I'm only complaining about it because I generally struggle to hear it. So, in my opinion, would I get this machine again, or equipment? Definitely, definitely. The price point, you can't beat it. It's got a good price point. It's the lower end of the price point, but the, the, the impact you get with this equipment is top notch. So you get a sort of budget friendly equipment, but you get a top tier level performing equipment too, or piece of equipment, uh, telecommunications device, whatever you want to call it. So that's that's the main thing that really drew me towards EcoX gear UHF was the fact that it was so budget friendly, but such good quality gear. And the team at EcoX gear are really easy to deal with. You send them a message on Instagram if you have trouble with their gear and they reply within 24 hours. They're really friendly, really helpful. So that's the other reason I really went for there is that good customer service because we all know poor customer service drives away customer because you don't want to deal with a big company that just goes, you're just another number. We can sell two other pieces of equipment and then they won't help you. But the EcoX guy, EcoX gear people generally really want to help you and make sure that you get the best out of your equipment. So all in all, would I get another one of their equipment or UHF? Definitely. It's, it's a no brainer. They're just so down to earth, so easy to use. Just pull it out of the box. Everything's there, ready to go. The instruction manuals are so comprehensive that you can do it within a day like we did and you can just start using it. Like it's not complicated about having to run different cables everywhere and different plugins and too many functions. It's uh, definitely less is more with these bits of equipment because it's not crowded handset, it's not hard to use, it's not overly complicated to start using. So I would definitely go get another one and I hope that you enjoy it too if you go out and decide to get your own one because I would definitely rate these 10 out of 10. Like I said, it's just easy to use all user friendly and just down to earth people that you can talk to when you have an issue with your equipment. So with that saying, that's the end of our feedback on the EcoX gear. So hopefully you go get your own one and you can just enjoy getting out, talking to people on the road like we have too. Alrighty, so with that wrapping up, we are gonna call that episode here. We hope you enjoyed that install and review of the EcoX Gear UHF. Now, next week, we'll say next week, next episode is gonna be part one of our border track trips. We actually get to see us using some of this equipment that we've uh, been reviewing. So you actually get to see us use it, which is good. And then after that, we have another review because we're working to with, with EcoX Gear 2 to do another pro project on the portable UHF. We've got a couple of five watt UHFs, which we're gonna test out and review, unbox, all that good stuff like we have in this episode. So make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all our trips coming up and you can see that border track trip between Vic and South Australia and we will see you then. Bye.